Fox News 7. Interview with Philip Turner. are not supposed to block or um, what, is, what is the exact wording there? Hold on. Yeah, it's actually on page uh, 123 of their awesome policy manual and the policy is 302 interaction of community uh, sure. section 6 number 5 um, you are not allowed to officially block or obstruct cameras or recording devices and also 
in any way threaten, intimidate, or otherwise discourage an individual from reporting officers enforcement activities. Do you feel like police did that? Yes. How? Without a doubt. One, I was still silently reporting. He stood in front of my camera the whole time with the light. He even grabbed me several times, even if I was moving out of the way. And even when I was on the side it also states here, wherever a person has the legal right to be, you still have to grant the same access as news media or anything like that. I was on the sidewalk. And he tells me, you can't pass a certain point. I said, but I'm on the sidewalk. You're telling me I can't go down to the block. So not only did he discourage me from filming, he also limited my way of travel. He wouldn't let me go to my car. After the, tra after the guy was arrested, put in the car and drove off. He wouldn't even let me go to my car and leave. He wanted me to wait until the tow truck got there, tow the car, and wait for the tow truck to leave. And then he says, then you can go to your car, which I thought was really ridiculous. Now police, because I was just watching your video a little bit, and police keep saying you're not being detained, but you can't leave. Is that kind of a mixed message, do you think? Yes, I kept asking, I said, are I being detained? Am I being detained? He would not say, no, you can walk down this way. I said, I understand that, but my car's right there. I want to get in my car and I'm, I want to leave. He says, I want to believe you, but I don't believe you. So you're going to stay here until the truck truck gets here. But obviously there's no way, you know, I, there, there was nowhere for me to go. Yeah, I could catch the bus, but it wouldn't make sense because my car's right here. And from where I was standing, I was five feet away from my car when I asked him. I said, I want to get my car. Five feet from my car. From where I was standing at the time from the traffic stop, I was about 60 feet away. So I could easily get in my car. But he refused to why do you think that police reacted that way? Uh, to be honest with you, I have, I have no idea. Um, I've actually had several incidents that were like that. And to be honest with you, they thought that I was on part of peaceful streets. So that's one of the main reasons why I came, came at me like that. And I told myself, look, I'm not with peaceful streets. I know who they are. I sometimes go out and fail with them, but I'm not a part of them. But I don't think he knew. But from the first time I had my first incident, I was grabbed for the DUI. He thought I was being streets, and that was cleared up, which is wrong. It shouldn't matter. You should be able to see what the person's doing right then and there, not judge someone, not judge someone based on their previous actions or a group based on some, someone's action. You know, a lot of things could have changed. People uh, restructure their groups. They create policies for their groups. Like, okay, look, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're not going to do. You can't sit there and be like, hey, this group people who film does this. So if you see a person that films, we're going to automatically see their part that So we're going to go ahead and address the situation. We're going to go ahead and contain the situation before anything happens. So what the officer did was completely wrong, and he made a horrible assumption. Do you understand um, that in some situations there probably are people that maybe interfere with a traffic stop or something like that when they are filming? Yeah, I do understand that and I do get that. Everybody has their own way of dealing with police interactions and I have my way. My way is like not to interfere, don't say anything, step aside and film, and that's it. But from where I was standing, I could not interfere with that traffic stop. There was no way I could physically interfere. And even if I would yell, which I don't do, well, I'm not going to say this, I don't do that, so there's just no way I would interfere. But from where I was standing, there was no way I could physically interfere. Is it discouraging when police officers react that way to somebody filming in public? Yes. Um, and a lot of things, and the, and the thing about it is, is you know, whenever you get put up by police officers, it could be intimidating, it could be stressful, because you, you never know what to expect. You're like, oh man, I'm in trouble. Because usually that's police are there because of trouble or some sort of uh, incident like that. So when I have a police officer that's like less than a foot of me, and I'm like backing up and he's still coming close to me. This police officer is armed. He has a gun, he has a taser, he has a nice thing. And I have a camera. And he's getting all up into me, grabbing me several times. And I was I was scared. I honestly legitimately was scared. But I was like, you know what? Whatever I do, I gotta keep filming. I can't turn his camera off. I'm not gonna go near the traffic stop. I'm just gonna keep backing up and moving. And the more that I backed up, the more they came at me. And it's just like, you know, at this point, it's not about officer safety. It's about control, controlling the evidence at that point. Because they arrested the driver. I'm not sure why they arrested him. I couldn't even see him. I had a bright light flashing my face the whole time. So there was no way for me to see him. And 
even when I was on the sidewalk way down the street before they actually turned around, I took one step to film. I got, and they turned around and flashed the light right into my camera. So at that point, I was like, no, this is not, not even about officer safety. Even another incident where I was at the bank, I was at another bank uh, down, it was a meeting that actually separated the two banks. I went over there, stand next to an ATM, I drive from ATM, well lit area, and I stood there and filmed. And they still shine their lights at my camera. And this is when the tow truck came, and they already arrested the driver and left. So I was like, you know what, this is not about officer safety. It's about controlling the area. That's what it is. And those were all this incident on Friday? This is all this incident. Okay. Knowing that these are Austin Police Department's policies, that they're not able to obstruct somebody from filming, right? Um, as long as they're doing it lawfully. Um, does it surprise you that this was, I mean, from the video I saw, it was not just one officer shining his flashlight at your camera. There was another officer shining his flashlight at the other camera, right? So is it surprising to you that neither one of them said, like, maybe this is not the way to go? It, it, it shocked me a little bit. I was like, you know, guys, I even, even, I even mentioned it in the video. I was like, you guys are not abiding by your policy right now. And he's like, well, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you and everyone's traffic stop. And that kind of let me know. It's like, so I, I see where your priorities are. I said, obviously, I'm not interfering because you still haven't told me what I was interfering with. Um, and also, you just told me that you know, you're not worried about that right now. Meaning he was referring to his policy. About that. that shocked me. I was like, wow, you know, I've had many inst instances where I'm filming police and I'm met with resistance just for doing so. And and I'm shocked that these officers don't even know what that is. Like, I say, 302, what is that? So it's, it's very shocking to hear that when I say that. Is it encouraging how uh, Police Chief Art Acevedo responded to your video on Twitter and said, you know, this is going to be under investigation and this is against our policy? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, uh, me and Felipe Heming, uh, he's uh, one of the attorneys for photography is not a crime um, researcher. Uh, he he and I reached out to Art and um, he, I was very impressed with how he handled it. Um, I was aware of the, the, the audio that he had with the meeting and I heard about it on the news. And it was very encouraging hearing him that stand up for people saying, you know, this is how we're going to handle this. We're not going to keep violating people's rights. We're not going to keep doing, you know, this wrong thing. We need to build bridges for the community. And after hearing that, you know, I had encouragement. I was like, yes, you know, we're taking a step in the right direction as far as building this relationship. Um, even when I was on 6th Street when that shooting happened, when I saw the detain wrong person, I was like, you know, let me go ahead and address this. Let me go ahead and uh, step in and clarify things. So I felt like it was my part to do that, like as serving the community. So whenever I hear uh, the chief talk about that, that actually gives me and other cop watchers hope that we can actually go out here and exercise our First Amendment rights without being threatened, intimidated, and arrested. How do you think this situation should be handled? I mean, do you think that this is a matter of better training for police officers? Should they be reprimanded for the way that they reacted? I mean, what do you think is fair at this point? Um, what I think is fair is that these officers should be reprimanded and suspended without pay. Um, honestly, I had a lot of time to think about it and calm down from the incident. During the incident, I thought they should be fired. But after you know time to think about it, these officers need to be trained. These officers need to be made an example out of to this police department to let people know, like, hey, these people have a right to film. And you guys need to realize that. You guys need to get on the ball or find somewhere else to work. We're not going to do that. And after that incident, I actually called, uh, Todd called the uh, supervisor, uh, the 911 call, and I was uh, contacting the two supervisors after the incident. And after I explained them everything, they said pretty much their standards are, or their standard protocol, is to pretty much stand there and observe people who film, not interfere, not go up and talk to them, just stand by and watch what they do. The moment that they interfere is the moment they interfere. That's their standards. Why do you think police are so on edge about being filmed by the public? Or I shouldn't say police in general because it's probably not all officers. In fact, I know it's not all officers, but why do you think these police specifically were? Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's just that fear of, you know, being on, on film, just being online, just knowing that everything that you're doing right now is being observed and documented and recorded. 
So there's no way for you to uh, falsify reports. There's no way for you to violate someone's rights. Because they're more likely to violate someone's rights when they're off camera than they are on camera. And the fact that if they do it on camera speaks volumes. But I do believe there's a lot of police officers out there that, that uh, um, I do believe there's a lot of police officers out there that encourage us to film and they respect our first the right to film. But then you have those out there that are just like, no, you know, we don't like it, we don't, we don't want you to film our stuff, you know, coming over here, looking at what I'm doing, or recording what I'm doing, you know, go mind your business. The thing about it is, what you're doing right now is my business. You know, I'm observing my tax dollars right now in, 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 in action right now. So I have every right to observe how you're, uh, how you're behaving on a job. I have every right to observe to see how you're treating people. So I have every right to document that and publish that. What is your goal when you're filming officers in these kind of traffic stops and stuff like that? Are you just kind of a watchdog or is this, are you expecting something to happen? Well, I'm not expecting anything to happen. I'm basically making a YouTube channel educating people's rights to basically thing. You have the right to go out and film police officers. You have every right to document your encounters. And don't be discouraged to do so. Don't be intimidated to do so. If a police officer says, hey, turn that camera off, don't turn the camera off. You have every right to do so. And I encourage you to stand up for your rights. That's basically what I'm, that's the, best, that's the message that I'm sending out right now. Uh, currently, right now, uh, we fall into the Fifth Circuit of Appeals. And they don't have a ruling yet saying that uh, citizens have the first amendment right to record and document police activities that falls under the first amendment. I actually have I have a court case right now in the Fifth Circuit that's under oral argument on December 5th, and that case is basically state and state. This could be the first case that allows us to have the right, or they, we can have a ruling for the rights to record police officers. So that's what I'm fighting. So obviously something like this has happened to you before if you have a court case coming up. Yes, many times. Um, and, we'll, and this is why I do a lot of first amendment audits. Basically what I do is I go out and I film uh, public buildings, I film uh, government buildings, basically educating even the employees. You know, hey, we have a right to document uh, public employees, government officials out in public. You know, sometimes they don't know, but when they come, at, and come out and talk to me, Sometimes we have a cordial conversation. Sometimes they put me in handcuffs and want to take me to jail just for filming. And I'm like, no, this is not how it's supposed to be. Um, we have a right to film, you guys, and you guys have to respect it. It's in the Constitution. It's our rights. You know, you know, you guys can do it. Or if you're uncomfortable with being on camera out in public, then you might have to find another occupation. That's just that's just what it's going to come down to. But the easiest way to find out if a police department or a police force is going to respect your rights is doing these first amendment audits. So basically what I do is I go out, I go to a police department, and I film it. Basically what I do is I check to see if officers are wearing their seatbelts because they like to write seat, uh, tickets for seatbelts. I like to see officers go out and they actually talk to people, you know, um, comfort them and, you know, try to build a relationship with the community. I film them doing certain activities. And then most times, sadly to say, I met with resistance by the police. So you do also film officers doing Good things for the community. That's what you're saying. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to say that maybe we haven't touched on? Um, that I, I really want some action taken because I have six complaints that I have filed within a year and a half period, and they have all came back unfounded. Now, in these complaints, I have been stalked and harassed for filming police activity. I have been shoved, grabbed pushed off sidewalks for simply filming, and I've had lights, uh, spotlights, uh, stinger flashlights, which are, they create a high uh, beam of light, which actually can be uh, offensive, and it can cause injury if you flash in your face for a long period of time. That also in our policy states that you cannot obstruct cameras, and that's also came back to the but I had a uh, conference with the Austin Monitors about four of the complaints, all of them came back on the mountain. One of them struck me in particular, actually two of them. One where I filmed the police station, which is I have a federal lawsuit right now, I filed that a month ago. The office, their findings were all 
Mr. Turner had to do was give up his ID, comply, and the stop would have been over. However, the policy says you are not allowed to demand identification. So it's like, are, what are they enforcing? They're clearly not enforcing their policies. And you expect the Internal Affairs to do so. And also, when I was filming a DUI arrest, I was just back filming. Officer kept blocking my view, stand, stood in front of my camera, stepped to the side, blocked my view. No matter how many times I moved all over the place, he kept stepping in front of the camera. They actually did an investigation. Now, in that investigation, the officer admitted to intentionally blocking my view to the internal affairs. That still came back on the mountain. So do you think that maybe there's a disconnect with the people who are investigating these claims? Yes, and I'm going to have to take action on this. Like, obviously, my complaints are being respected. My rights are not being respected. So I'm going to have to take another step. What's that step? I might have to sue the city. Because, obviously, I have multiple incidents here. All I want to do is go out, document police, educate others, and I can't even exercise my own First Amendment right. Yeah, it's a First Amendment right. It's the first right in the Constitution, and it's not being respected. Do you want to get any video of some no, of these? No. Yeah. Do you want to do it inside? Let's just do it right here. This is fun. Okay. So this here is their policy. It's uh, page 122 and 123, basically acknowledging that also police officers respect people's right to film and document police activity. This here is uh, a summary. Um, they would not allow me to record the uh, conference, so I basically have to document and take notes. And basically, the first com four complaints that I filed were all unfounded, even though one of them stated that I did not have to demand. They did. They did not have the right to demand identification. However, they said, well, if you would ID, it would have been over. And the other one, the officer admitted to blocking my view, and they still found it unfounded, even though he admitted violating policy. This here was another incident where I was discouraged to file a complaint because I was like, you know, I've already filed five complaints already, and they've all been unfounded. And yet again, I filmed the police officer, and he kept shining the light on my camera, and he told me to move from the sidewalk. So it's kind of discouraging. And these here are all five complaints that I filed, all within a year and a half time period. And these are all here in Austin? All these are Austin. Can you just really quick like point point to um, the part in here that says that they can't block or restrict? Yeah, <clears throat> pretty much sections A and B basically states that officers respect the right to, uh, that we respect people's right to film. And it actually gives locations such as parks, sidewalks, streets, location of public protests, and any place where media has a right to access. But section C, all the way down, all the way down, to the states, you know, officers shall not order persons to see such activity, and demand that person's identification, and demand that person state a reason why he or she is taking photographs, detain that person, intentionally block or shut cameras or recording devices, and in any way threaten, intimidate, or otherwise discourage an individual. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Where are you guys parked? Uh, we're parked down that way. That way. Okay. Little... Well, we'll walk you back over here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the guy who got arrested that night was a DWI or? I have no clue. They never said anything about yeah. it. I just, I just know that meanwhile, while I'm over here trying to get a good angle to film that, uh, by the time I got back to where I was, they already had him in handcuffs and searching him. 
hauled him off the show. Um, I'm not sure if it had anything to do with maybe an illegal possession, oh, yeah. a DUI, or maybe just had a warrant. Usually, you know, when I'm observing, I can actually tell right off the back, okay, so obviously it could be a DUI, or, or maybe it's a warrant to bring this information and just arrest him immediately. Or it could be possession because he's pulling the driver out to then he's going to search the car. And usually, if they have any uh, controlled substance, they would put it in the car. So usually, you can tell that stuff about standing back and watching. And I had no idea what the guy was doing. Were these cops pretty young? Uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't even tell because I had a bright light in my face. Okay. And it, to me, it, it, it messed up my vision a little bit that night. I had to pull over on the side of the road because I obviously 